In my previous course, Exploring Swift, we got started in our exploration of standard library protocols. We started with some simple convenience protocols such as equatable, hashable, and comparable. Then we started to learn about associated type with the example of the expressible by protocol family. In this section, we're going to take this even further by looking at two of the standard library's most powerful protocols. These are the two central collection protocols, sequence and collection. These protocols are far more complex than the type convenience protocols we previously looked at. We'll learn a lot more about what associated type means and how it can be used. Studying sequence and collection will also equip you with the power to understand and utilize protocol extensions, a topic we'll cover later in this course. So let's start by introducing these two protocols. First, sequence is a type that provides sequential, iterated access to its elements. Collection is a sequence whose elements can be traversed multiple times, non-destructively, and accessed by an indexed subscript. Notice the similar description. In fact, collection inherits from sequence, so every collection is also a sequence. They sound quite similar, but there are important differences. In terms of classical data structures, you should consider a good example of a sequence to be a linked list. A linked list allows you to access its elements in order, but does not provide random access. On the other hand, a classic collection is an array, since an array can be accessed by an indexed subscript. We're examining these protocols for the first time. We have in fact been already using them with the standard library collections we've used. Array is a collection since it supports indexed access. In actual fact, it inherits from collection via two further protocols, random access collection and bi-directional collection. We won't be covering these now, but feel free to look at their interfaces in Xcode or the documentation browser. Consider the properties of an array. You can probably already imagine what they express. Set and dictionary are also collections. This may seem strange compared to array. Dictionaries and sets don't naturally support indexing. In fact, this is the difference introduced by the protocols random access collection and bi-directional collection. Dictionaries and sets do have an index, but not a randomly accessible integer index as with array. Let's start by demonstrating adopting sequence on a custom data type. As you perhaps guessed, we're going to start with an implementation of a linked list data structure. This is an excellent example as it's clearly a unidirectional sequence, which is the key characteristic of a pure Swift sequence. Let's have a look at the basic implementation. There are a few interesting points to this implementation, so let's take a look before we begin. We want to store data on our list, so of course we want a generic type. Here the placeholder is the simple T. A node has an associated value of type T, and we also have a convenience initializer for converting an array of T into a list. A linked list node has two fundamental states. It's either a node with a pointer to the next node, or it's the tail of the list. This lends itself very well to an enum implementation. There's one final interesting point on the node case. The node case points to the next node in the list. Therefore, the node case has an associated value of the same type as the type itself. This means linked list is a recursive enum. It refers to itself. In order to support this, we need to add the indirect keyword so that the compiler can handle this case. This is a compiler error that will also be prompted by Xcode. Recursive enum is not marked indirect. Now let's have a look at adopting sequence onto our linked list type. Therefore, the node case has an associated value of the same type as the type itself. This means linked list is a recursive enum. It refers to itself. In order to support this, we need to add the indirect keyword so that the compiler can handle this case. This is a compiler error that will also be prompted by Xcode. Recursive enum is not marked indirect. Now let's have a look at adopting sequence onto our linked list type. Our first stop when learning about a new type is, as usual, the developer documentation for the sequence protocol. Under the section conforming to the sequence protocol, we find the following guidance. To add sequence conformance to your custom type, add a make iterator method that returns an iterator. Therefore, our next stop is to look at the signature of the make iterator method. And here it is. We need to return a value of type self.iterator. What is this type? Next stop, let's go to its definition. Iterator is an associated type. We must therefore define this type in our implementation. It must be any type that conforms to the protocol iterator protocol. 
We'll look at this definition in our example. Finally, there's a second option for implementing a sequence. Alternatively, if your type can act as its own iterator, implementing the requirements of the iterator protocol and declaring conformance to both sequence and iterator protocol are sufficient. In our linked list example, it's possible to cover both examples. So let's get started. In our linked list example, we'll be using the first method, creating a custom iterator type. So let's get started implementing the linked list sequence in a playground. Here I have the linked list enum. And at the bottom here, I'm going to create a linked list from an array of integers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I've implemented the array init method. I'm using a trick here for converting an array into a linked list. If you work backwards, it becomes very easy. I'm using the array.reversed method. Now this is an efficient way of working. The reversed method doesn't create a copy of the array with all the items in reverse order. It actually returns a view onto the array with the items in reverse order. So this is a very convenient way to iterate over the array, which is what we want to do. We don't want to make a copy. Then I'm going to do a functional re reduce. And I start by creating a tail node. And then as we iterate over the sequence, I have the current node and the item in the array. And we create a new node with the current item value and with the next node pointing to the current node. So on the first item, that will be the tail. And then as we move backwards, we replace the tail with each of the real nodes until we get to the start of the array. And then we assign self to the head node from the list. So that's a nice and efficient way to get started. Now let's start implementing sequence on our linked list. I'm going to do this in an extension, extension linked list sequence. So if you look again at the definition of the sequence protocol, you see we have to define the associated type iterator, which must conform to iterator protocol. So let's look at iterator protocol. We have an associated type element, the type of element traversed by the iterator. And we have the method next, which returns the next element in the sequence or nil at the end of the sequence. So let's go back. And I'm going to comment out the extension for now. And I'm going to define our iterator type. I'm going to create a nested type because the iterator belongs to the linked list type. I'm going to create a class. I'll call this list iterator, which is also a generic type with the same T placeholder. We'll have a private variable which is the current node in the list, which is a linked list. And we're going to create an initializer, which will be the head value when we start the iteration. Just assign that to the current variable. Now I need to adopt the iterator protocol on the iterator. So I'm going to do this in an extension as well for tidiness. Linked list dot list iterator because it's a nested type. And iterator protocol. So the first thing we need to do is define our associated type. So if we start typing E for element, we have the auto complete type alias element equals so in this case, we want the type of the items in the list. So that is our T placeholder. And the next thing we need to do is define the next method. So this is a class. So we're going to delete the mutating keyword because that is assumed on a class. That's the reason why I chose a class because I need to update the current value each time. And we're going to do a switch on the current node. 
So the simplest case is the tail node. So if the current node is a tail node, that means we're at the end of the sequence and we just return nil. The next case we have to handle is the node case. So in this case, we have both the value and the next node. So we want the item to be available and we want the next node to be available. So in this case, we want to return next, sorry, the item, but we also need to update the current node so that we progress along the list. So this is an interesting case where we can use defer. This would mean that we update the current node at the very end of the function after we've returned the item, which is quite a neat way of making sure that we're progressing forward correctly and not updating the node too early. Okay, so now we've implemented our list iterator type, adopting the iterator protocol. So now that we've implemented our iterator, we can get back to the sequence extension. So we need to define our iterator. So again, autocompletion iterator. That will be a list iterator, also of type T. And the final thing we have to do is define the make iterator method. So again, autocompletion. And we just need to return a list iterator starting on the current node. And we're done. So one final point before we finish here, we have associated types in the iterator protocol and also the sequence protocol, the element and also the iterator. However, notice in the methods next and the method make iterator, the return type matches the associated type. So because of Swift type inference, we're able to remove these type aliases and the Swift compiler can infer these associated types from the return types of the method. So we have element is T, next method returns T. No need to define it explicitly, the compiler can work that out. So let's delete the type alias for tidiness. And in the same case here in the sequence, our iterator is of type list iterator T, which matches the return type from the make iterator method. So we can just delete that and type inference will do the work for us. And there we go, we've implemented our list iterator and we have adopted sequence on our linked list. All right, so now that we've implemented a sequence, what can we actually do? Let's go back to the sequence protocol definition. And scroll down here and we start to see some other methods that we didn't look at previously, underestimated account, count, map, filter, for each, drop first, there are many. So what we discover is now that we've implemented the sequence protocol on our list, we gain access to these methods. So let's give it a try. Let's start with a for each. And I'm just going to print out the elements. And let's see what we get. So we have in the debug area, one, two, three, four, five, all of the elements in the list. Let's change that with reversed and we get all of the elements in reverse order. Let's try now map. And I'm just going to double every value there and print out the result. And here we have the doubled values. Let's try reducing to get the total of the array. And here we have 15.